Hello and welcome to week three of Workout Wednesday 2022 for Power BI. My name is Megan Longoria and I'll take you through this week's solution. This week we're looking at how we can visualize a percent difference from a selected date. So here's our final report. We have a line chart that represents different stock prices, but it's not the actual closing price we're looking at. We're looking at the percentage change from a specified reference date. So if I look at this last point, I want to see that Facebook is up 19.83%. Google is up 58% from where this reference line is. So everything starts at zero since all the numbers are equal to themselves and then it changes in a percentage from there. Your requirements are to create the line chart with that percentage change based on the close price in the data set to allow users to change the reference date. So I could choose a different date and my reference line and my calculations should adjust. And then you need to make sure the reference date is mentioned in the title of the chart using conditional formatting and label the lines at the end of the line, label the series here instead of using a legend. And then we have to add the vertical reference point so we know the point from which uh, we're calculating that percent difference. This data set comes from data.world. So if you go to Miss Data Viz, you'll find WOW 22 week three stocks January 22, and there's just one file. So I can get data use the data.world connector that's the owner and the data set ID. Choose the stocks table. And I prefer my column names to start with a capital letter, so I'm just gonna fix those. make my table start with a capital letter and I'm going to make a separate query for my reference date by referencing stocks, removing all the other columns and then removing duplicates. And what you'll notice is there isn't a date for every day from the start of the data set through the end, it's the first of a month. So if you make your own date table and use that as a reference date, uh, you'll have extra dates that don't have values in your chart. So be careful with that. And that is all I'm going to do in Power Query. And now 
now that that has loaded, we can see our two tables. And I need to add a couple of measures here. So first, I'm going to do that percent change close. And I'm just going to go ahead and add it to my stock table since this is a very small informal model. And I got what is the, and I just chose max, but max stocks close for whatever the current uh, selected date is. Then I got the reference date that's been selected by the user. And now I've got the stock closing price on that selected date. So then I do the current closing price minus the reference closing price over the reference closing price. I know that I'm going to conditionally format my chart title. So I'm going to go ahead and put that measure in. And all I did was create two strings and then concatenate them at the end. So I'm getting that date from the reference date, date column. And then I'm saying percent difference in stock close price from that date that I've formatted in a specific way. And then the ampersand concatenates them. And I left a space after from so that this would fit nicely together. And now I can start building. I'm going to go ahead and add a text box for my title. And just say choose a date to see how the stock close price has changed. I'm going to add a slicer for my reference date. And I'm choosing to make that a drop down. And then I can add my line chart. I'll just make it nice and big. And I'll put my footer at the bottom. So for the line chart, I'm going to put date on the axis, company in the legend, and percent change close in the values. And it's going to start out blank because I haven't chosen a reference date. And let me go ahead and format that so I can more easily read it. And I'm going to choose November 1st of 2020 so we can see all the data comes together there. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn my series labels on so I get the labels from the lines and turn the legend off. Make sure my measure is formatted as a percentage. There we go. And I may come in and turn off titles because I feel like my chart title gives enough explanation that I don't need an access title. But I do want to make my fonts a little bigger there.
And I need to do the same thing for the series labels. All right, now we just need to add a vertical reference line that is on the analytics pane. And it's an x-axis constant line that you can rename here. And then use an expression doesn't really matter if you do earliest or latest there. Make my line pretty dark. Change it to dotted. And then I would like to add my data label so that I can see that date actually label. And that is the basics. The rest is just formatting. To make it look like my finished product, I can customize my current theme and choose Arial for my fonts. I can make sure backgrounds are turned off. I'll change my page background. Turn off the transparency. On my slicer, make sure it's single select. I set this as reference date. I actually made that a bit smaller and then made the font color a little lighter. And then I changed the colors on my line chart. I'm going to make Facebook kind of a teal color. Google can be green. Netflix is red. And Tesla can be this bluish purple. So that's changed my lines, but I want my labels to be the same color. So that's in series label. And if you go customize series, oops, Facebook, choose the blue color, Google, green, Netflix, red and Tesla darker blue. And there we go. So before I publish this to a real audience, I would make sure that I have checked accessibility, color contrast, set my tab order, 
uh, check to see how these colors look together for people who have color vision deficiency, all of that fun stuff. But that is how you calculate a percentage change from values at a specified reference date. Thanks for watching.